So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a VBA login form and what we're going to do is we're going to be doing it with a practical application. What this application is going to do is it's going to grant users access to a particular part of the spreadsheet. So we're going to have three tabs on the spreadsheet, namely uh, Bill's sheet, John's sheet and Tom's sheet and so these particular worksheets are areas which each one of them is only allowed to go into their own worksheet so maybe this could be a consolidation file that you're uh, distributing to various users and they have to put in their numbers for their department and you don't, it's confidential, you don't want the other users knowing about one user knowing about the other user's confidential financial information within the department. The way this has been set up is you can see there's a config sheet here for Bill, John and Tom. That's the, their passwords and these are the sheets that they get, each of them get access to. Now this particular methodology could also be used to log into a SQL Server database or any kind of other system or an access database or just giving you ac giving people access to the particular program that you've written. It works for all these, but I just thought I'd use this as an example. Okay, let's get to it. So step one is we need to add the form. So let's do that right now. Insert user form. The form is there. So first of all, I'm going to size my form. So let's just give it a name, form login, and I'm going to set its width to 240, and it's set to that, and I'm going to set its height to 129. Let's just say 130. Okay, and its caption is going to be login to test system. Now it's time to put some controls on the form. So again, got to go find my uh, toolbox. Keeps moving all the time. Now let's put a text box on the form and let's put a command button on the form. So here we go, text box, let's give it a name. I'm going to call it text username and I'm going to make it left 12 and I'm going to set its height to 18 and I'm going to set its width to 204. Okay, so now the quick hack is rather than drawing another form, just another text box rather, just copy it. So control C and control V and we've got another text box. So now it's inherited all the properties I set with the other one. So I just need to make sure its top position is 42, which I want. And um, top is 42. And that's pretty much it actually. It's taken up all the other positions that I needed it to have. The only thing is I need to set its name. So its name is going to be text password. And importantly, we need to set its password character. So if we go to, if we look at password character here, if I don't set that, when the user types in their password, it will be visible to anybody looking over their shoulder. So you actually need to tell the VBA form that this is going to be a password text box and the easiest way is just put in a password character and in this instance I'm just going to put in the standard asterisk password character. So that's that good to go. So now let's um, set up our login button. So I'm going to call this button command login and I am going to give it a caption of login and its left position is going to be 136 and its height again needs to be 20 and it's at 24 at the moment and we will set its width to 80 and also we're going to set the default property of the button to true. What that means is when the user presses their enter key or their return key that button is automatically pressed. So it just makes it a bit more easier for users of it to uh, use it basically. So that's that button set. So now we're going to set up the cancel button. So I'm just going to copy it again and I will just name it command cancel. And with this button I'm going to set its caption to cancel. And just like with the default button on the login button, on the login button, I'm going to the default property rather, I'm going to set the cancel property to true on this. That means when the user presses the escape button, key, this button is automatically pressed. Okay, and now I need to set its top position to 72 
and its left position to 12. Now there's just one more thing that needs to be done with this form and this is the icing on the cake. So if I run the form to launch it and I press the tab key you see the tabs going all over the place so if I start for initially it's in the, this button here in this text box here which is the username but when I press tab again it goes to the login button but really I wanted it to go to the password button. I press tab again now it's at password now it's at cancel. That's not what I want. What I want is a smooth movement from from username to password to cancel and then to login. So let's set that up right now. And the trick to do that is first of all highlight the last button that you want to be indexed. And so if I go to tab index I'm going to set the tab stop the tab index to zero. So that's it set to zero. Then I set the cancel button to zero. Then I set the next button in the row, text box in the row which is the password to zero. Then finally the username to zero. So let's see what, what's happened. As a result of that the uh, tab index automatically keeps adjusting. So now if we look at it we've got the username with a tab index of zero. The password has a tab index of one. The cancel has a tab index of two and the login has a tab index of three. So now if I run the, button, the uh, form and uh, you see the username has the focus. I press tab again now the password, tab again, cancel, login. So it's working intuitively the way users would like it to work. So now it's time to code the form. So how we do that is we, we make sure the form is selected and we click on the view code button and we then get this module. We don't want user form click. We don't need that. So this form is being designed in an object-oriented manner. That's the best way to get information, in my opinion, in and out of a form like a login form, shall we say. So what we first got to do is, given the form is an object, it's going to be communicating with a calling routine. And so the calling routine is going to launch the form, but then it's going to query the form and say, hey, what password did the user put in? What username did he put in or she put in? And did they click cancel or enter? Okay, so the way we do that is we create what's known as properties. And these are quick properties. I'm not going to set up what are known as property lets and property gets, so please don't complain about that. You guys will know about it. Um, we just want to simplify get the message across here. So what I'm going to do is public AAA username as string public AAA password as string and then public AAA cancel clicked as boolean. So these are the three messages that we want to convey to the calling routine. So the next element that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to hook in the cancel button and the login button. And you can do it via this drop down up here. So cancel. So what happens if the user presses cancel? Well, we need to let the calling routine know that the user pressed cancel. So I'm going to type me dot now. Obviously VBA has IntelliSense and you can now see why I prefixed my properties with treble A because the form has a load of built-in properties and you don't want to have to go looking through them each time that you're trying to access one of them so they all sort to the top. That's why the way AAA. So cancel clicked, which I can see I spelled wrong but let's not worry about it now, equals true. And then we're not going to do unload me because that's not the object oriented way. We're going to do me.hide. And me.hide makes the form still exist. It's just no longer visible. Okay, so that's the cancel button clicked. Now we need to do the login. And login is just going to be simply me.hide because we log in. The person's filled in the information. You know, we could put in extra validation uh, buttons which say, hey, you know, you haven't put in a password or a login. But for simplicity, if the person doesn't put in a password or a username and they click login, the verification is just going to fail them. Okay, so me dot 
username equals me.txt username. me.password equals me.text password. And I've had so many takes of this video, I don't want to go back and do it again. So I'm just gonna, I'll either cut this in or uh, let you see it now. Okay, so let's try it again. Da -da -da. Okay, so let's handle the code to call the form. So step one, I'm going to insert a regular module and I'm gonna call this module mmain. Next, we need to put in some code to initially just Make the, fun make the login form work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function, login user, and that's it. And then dim of login, that's the name I'm going to give the login form as for m login. And um, of for object and form login. Next, I'm going to set of login equal to new form login. That's just the way you do it when you do it from an object perspective. So of login dot show VB modal means basically make the code stop until the user presses OK or cancel. So because we need to continue uh, being able to work with the code after the form goes back to the user. So of login dot show VB modal. So now we need to capture the username and password. Don't worry about this. Uh, optional by ref s said username. Reason I'm doing this is I want to be able to, later on, I want to be able to use this login form to pass the username back to the calling routine. Dim s said password as string. So now s said username, and this is where the object orientation comes in, equals of login dot username. And s said password equals of login dot password. And you see what this does is it avoids the need to use local variables. Local variables are terrible, they'll mess up your code. What you've now got is a, shall we say, you've got an elegant solution because what I can now do is login set of login equals nothing. So what we've done here is we've um, declared the form in that line and that line. I've then shown the form with this line. Then, so when the form is shown, well, let's just give a demo of where we're at right now. Subtest and call login user. Okay, so let's just run the code this way. Okay, here we go. Sean and no, no password. And now I click login. And so there you go. What's happened is the code ran to login. Then because it was VB modal, it displayed the form, but didn't go to the next section. So now if I F8 over this, we can see username is Sean and the password is no password, which means I would fail. But that's the, an example of the OO element of the form. So if I were to go, for example, OF login, and you can check it in the immediate window as well, dot username, Sean. But now when I F8 over it, the form no longer exists. So if I try this again, I get a message. Uh, an error message because the object variable no longer exists. So, okay, sorry for rambling a bit, but I think it's useful information to know. So what we've demonstrated here is we've grabbed the information out of the form and we no longer need the form, so we got rid of it. So now let's test the username and password. So I can go if, let's see, mutils, this is a function I've written that's in the downloadable spreadsheet that comes with this, dot username and password, good to go and s said password, then else, and if. And then failed, passed. Okay, so that's where you put your code if the log user passed or if the user failed, okay? So um, that's the basic boilerplate. So let's just test that message box, passed, message box, failed. So let's test it again. And um, this is where when you're using more than one language, you can make mistakes. Okay, so let's just let that run out. Let's do the test again. So if I go Tom and it's 
Tom pass. Login passed. Okay, so now let's just further demo what I've been talking to you about, this actual sheet thing that I was telling you about. So you know now how to create a login form that works, but let's demo the actual demonstration I told you about at the beginning of the video. So if I just paste in some code into the past section and into the failed section. So just to keep things as simple, login user equals true, login user equals false. Get rid of this. So this is a function. So now the next step is to paste in, just for speed, my function called system logon that was used with this. So if we just take this out and put in this, we've got system logon. So I've earlier created a uh, module called mutils, which has got display allowed worksheet, um, username and password good to go, the code for that, and get found range. And so it's, it's utilizing quite a few things that are in this spreadsheet, which as, again, you can download. Um, okay, so uh, let's just demonstrate this and uh, see what's going on here. So if I step through it, I'm gonna put a breakpoint here. Okay, so let's uh, test it now, run. So the F8 over this, uh, Tom and Tom pass. So notice that the uh, code has stopped. Now when I press login, we're back in the code again and I'll take out this breakpoint and we F8 out and the result is true. So I am an authenticated user or Tom whoever is, is an authenticated user. So if result equals true, we now get the allowed worksheet. So the allowed worksheet that Tom is allowed to use is the sheet called STOM. And all of that is in this code here, get found range. And it does a, it does a search on the hidden sheet, on the hidden config sheet. So let's go. So now we do the display allowed worksheet. So run that. And you can see Tom's worksheet is displayed. And if I go to format, hide and unhide, unhide sheet is still grayed out. However, you can see here, there are a number of sheets available. So now if I log out, we're back to the main sheet and you know the sheet exists, but it's not displayed. So there you have it, um, that's it. That's how to create a login sheet. So if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me and it encourages me to continue building these videos. And, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you use VBA for and uh, maybe give me some ideas for other videos that you'd uh, like me to make to uh, help you out on your VBA journey.